Welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 31st of January, 2022. Thanks for being here. Uh, topics we've got on the agenda today include news and a proposal to change meeting date and She Code Africa Contributhon and Linux installers switch. Oh, oh, and the weekly, shame on me, weekly change log review, which may take longer this week because there have been a lot of changes. Open pull requests. Any other topics we should put on the list? Yes. Uh, I also wanted to have a brief discussion with, about the GSOC meeting that we'll be having this week. Okay, good. So let's put that here. All right, good, okay. Any other topics? All right, well, so then let's, let's go through them and onward we go. So by way of news, we've got a weekly release Plan for tomorrow. Uh, includes many changes. Uh, it may, there's a chance it may be delayed one day for further changes. And the reason there is Um, some of the changes we may be LTS candidate, backport candidates. Okay. Excuse that. So because they might be LP LTS backport candidates, it's better to get them into the release so that we've at least got a week before the LTS. LTS 2.319.3 is scheduled for next Wednesday. So 10 days from now or nine days from now. Yeah. Let's see any, oh, and then uh, GSOC project ideas and recruiting mentors and recruiting are happening. Any other news that I've missed? Your syntax on that bullet is off. I don't care, I know what you mean. I'm sorry, which syntax? Oh, mentors are recruiting are happening. Oh yes, that's right. You mean recruiting mentors, are we getting Nibbles on some more mentors. We are. We're. Not, we certainly don't have enough mentors, but um, we've reached out to previous students. We've reached out to previous project, part, previous mentors, and have received some yeses. So, for instance, Natasha Stopa, who wrote the plugin installation manager during her uh, Google Summer of Code project um, two, three, four years ago, has agreed to be a mentor. So, uh -huh. so we're getting some progress, and it's good to have those who had previously done projects be mentors because they have insights into what works and what doesn't. Right. Okay, so let's see. Next proposal was, I'd like to change this meeting to happen on Tuesday at 2 a.m. UTC instead of, instead of, or to change, to meet Friday at 2 a.m. UTC instead of Tuesday, 2 a.m. UTC. So instead of this time, it would be, three 24 hour periods later. So 72 hours later. But same time of day. Exactly, precisely yeah. the same time of day. So it'll be Friday, time. so it'll be Saturday morning in India and also. No, no, Saturday. it'll be Friday morning in India and Thursday night for us in the United States. Oh, okay. I may sometimes have a problem with attending, but I'll see what I can do. I think I can do it, so. Okay, well, so. So would it would it be better later if we went even later on um, on Thursday or is um, it is that Thursday? We'd have the to problem? go late enough to kill you, I think. 
Okay, and I don't want to do that. I'm trying to. This is actually attempting to not kill me. So yes, I, yeah. Let me see because I'm. I'm the uh, the issue is dog school is that night, but with uh, COVID, okay. I've been needed much less. So I've been tending to go down about eight, and we're done at seven my time. So, so I'm yeah, probably and, okay. But if if they get shorthanded on something for registration and stuff, I might have to go down and be there at six. Okay, well, so so let us know because the we absolutely will have to end by seven your time because that's when Google Summer of Code office hours starts. Aha. Uh -huh. That's and that's why. So I'm trying to piggyback these two things so that they are back to back for me. Right. So it'll be a hard stop. Good. So yeah, yeah. So let's go for it. And okay, Kristen, would that be okay for you, or is that going to cause yeah, undue I think, hardship? I think the two of us are going to be in the same meetings. So. <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> <So> cool. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Okay. And Diraj, okay for you? I think you had said yes by email already. Yes, it looks great. Great. Even I'll be joining the same meetings back to back. <laughs> and and that's that's healthy all around. I like that. Yes, exactly. Okay. Anything else on the meeting change? Okay. Um, I'll put it on up. I'll update the calendar and uh, and www.jenkins.io. Great, thanks everybody. Thank you for your patience with that. We will not meet this Thursday. Just so we're clear, one meeting a week I think is enough for us. So, so we're not, or this dirage for you Friday. So it, this change won't be effective until uh, about 10 days from now. Sure, makes sense. Okay, great. All right, ready to switch to the weekly change log. Yes. Oops, not that one. We want to do this one. Okay, good. There it is, automated change log for 333. Three, three. Okay, so. All right, so this one needs a comment that we have to fix it later because it's got hyperlinks in it that we can't do right now. So let me make a note there. Needs links split into references after release. Okay. All right, so plus it's a developer category. Oh yes, and and move to the end. Good, thank you. Thanks very much. Yes. All right, so this one is. Let's go read it though to be sure that if there's something else we need to change. Jenkins core pull requests. Okay, so proposed change log. Jenkins has upgraded the Xtreme library from 1.4.8.18 to 1.4.19. This maintenance release addresses a security vulnerability when unmarshalling highly recursive collections or maps causing a denial of service. Any corrections, changes, additions you want to make there? Uh, looks good to me. Okay. All right, onward to next then. Um, Jenkins can now perform startup completion notification in system D. This is part of a change that Basel has been working on to get Jenkins ready to support system D for on Linux systems instead of supporting system five in it. So we're joining the modern age. I guess. And I think it's actually sufficient there. So although we usually don't use um, use the word Jenkins in the in the, the text. So maybe it's let's propose an alternate. Ah uh, so then startup completion. So text says Jenkins can now perform startup completion notification too. So is it can so at this point it can do either one, right? 
Uh, well, yes. Yeah, so there isn't such a thing as startup completion notification for System Five in it. Oh, so, okay. So yeah, it, this is this is a new capability. Okay. Ah, the ability to use System D was already there. Well, no. The the thing. That, well, this is okay. So what it says is, how about how about as an alternative. Notify um, system D, notify system D, law, or maybe it's right, startup completion note. How do we say it? Provide startup completion notices or notification to system D users or on systems using system D on the startup completion notification can be provided to provided on systems using ah good okay something oh. or is available yeah that's good Okay. Is um, it now, can we just say with system D? Yeah. Yeah, that actually makes it clearer. Do they need a link? It's, I mean, is this just automatic or do they need to do anything if they want this? Um, so when the, well, so this, until the, the installer is actually delivering system D, this won't be visible to them. Oh, okay. Or, or I guess it will be visible to those users that are that hacked the Jenkins installation and created their own system D based uh, uh -huh. environment, but that's atypical. I'm yes, there are a few people who've done it, but that's not common. <clears throat> and if they did it, they probably don't need any stinking documentation to tell. Them right. About this. The fact that they did something as exotic like that is is usually a hint that they don't need help from anybody. Right. Okay. okay. Good enough. Go with that. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Okay, then update the bundled mailer plugin and the bundled matrix project. And these two, I don't see any point to actually notifying those. Yes, we updated a bundled plugin, but it doesn't, it's not typically been in the change log. So I'd propose to skip the change log there. Let's go read the text and see. Oh no, this intentionally includes change log entries. Okay, so if, if it's intentional and well, yeah, it's intentional and Vodak did it, I think we leave it in. Um, is, I wonder why, I mean, these aren't things I expect to see Vodak messing with unless there's a security ramification. And that's what he says here is, is um, after the advisory, should we put some text in there about the advisory? Ah, uh, or just to improve security and a reference to the advisory, is that good enough? Uh, yeah, that that's easy enough to do so. And here we could we could embed this link. Yeah. So we're based on security advisory that. I'll have to look to see how we've done that in the past. Uh, okay. I mean, in a way I like, even if it doesn't affect, it is good for people to see that we're constantly doing things to improve the security of Jenkins. Yeah. So that's yep. sort of the message. They may not care about the, um, and we've already told them that if there's an update, they should get it. So they will get the benefit, but. Good, right. Okay, next, remove assets that have since been replaced with SVG versions. 
I suspect assets should probably be images. Ah. Yeah, removed a large number of static assets, which really means pictures. Right, yeah. it's like that would be less confusing for. <laughs> okay, so, and we use present tense. So, images. No, do we use present tense? I don't remember now. We should, yeah. could lose the sense, I think. Yes, right, exactly. So before this, did we have we had duplicated PNG images? Files. No, we had, P well, yeah, we had PNG files and SVG files. And, and this is saying we don't need the PNG files anymore because the SVG files are scalable, even on exotic, beautiful displays like your Mac OS display. Uh, you're having fun with this. Um, <laughs> so 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 do i where are these images these are, are these are, are these in documentation or are these elsewhere in the product they're inside core so they're inside they're core part of the they're part of the they're the pictures that are rendered by jenkins on its web pages ah okay is that we're saying remove web page images that have been replaced yeah, the for me the trouble is that it's they're really at pages throughout the whole application. So okay. yes, the pages are all the the things are all in fact web pages, but it's the whole application. Okay. Yeah, that's good enough. And do we? Yeah, I don't think we need to expand the SVG, right? Yeah, I am almost thinking, but it's, I see it's not technically. It's just that we've replaced PNG images with SVG images. Right, Core. PNG and possibly some G GIF images with with that, yeah. Would it be worth saying in Core, in Jenkins Core? Uh, sure. In Core, like that. Yeah. Is it, should we, or should we, should we say Jenkins Core? I don't know. And I'm, he because this is the changelog for Jenkins, I'm hesitant right. to use the word Jenkins. Okay. What? Core when capitalized. Did... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kristen. Oh, sorry, I'm blown away. When did we add the SVG images? Is this like just taking them out? And this is just taking them out. It's not like doing the full replacement in this PR. Yeah. So okay. So we added them across multiple revisions over the last three or four or five months, and have been steadily fixing plugins to remove plugin references to the pictures to the PNGs. Okay. Because so I was like, ah, oh, it could be. I'm like, are we using the wrong like move here? But yeah, yeah, uh, th this makes sense then. Okay. Okay. Um, what's the label of upgrade guide needed? Uh, it says that this needs to be included in the LTS upgrade okay. guide. Okay. Okay, and that happens. So that happens automatically. Well, automatically is such a strong word. It happens <laughs> because because a, a writer reads it and says, we're going to put that in there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So what we'll do is we'll search for upgrade upgrade guide needed, pull requests that were merged, and we'll be sure that we bring the text from those into the upgrade guide. And the writer will fix the, edit the syntax in this, right? Oh, well, if there's actually, if we if you've got edits for that, I will happily take those because I am the writer of the upgrade guide. Usually. Oh, um, there is more updates. Uh, sure. In case there are more updates. Okay, so let's see. Where okay, do you see? Root lock and sh period. Okay, period, first yeah. let me. So, okay, so start at the beginning. Sure, all your uh, plugins are updated. Are are the most recent release before updating core. Otherwise you may see missing image, you may see missing images showing up or otherwise images may be missing. Right. Period. Period. Check. Uh, I see. There's the singular versus plural that you were making. I just okay. went from the bottom up. That's all. 
Yeah, check after you've updated. After, uh, yeah, let's see, check after. After updating, be check the new version. Okay, so after check for new plugin versions immediately after the core update. Okay. Is that a fair way to say it? Yes. Okay. Um, or it, maybe it should be, yeah, it could be install the latest plugin, yeah. And install available updates. updates. Okay. Good enough? Good. Okay. Looks better. All right, back to the change log. So update site warnings can now be configured with configuration as code. Oh. Okay, yeah. No no change from me there. That feels good. Any anyone else want a change? And I assume there is upgrade guide information for that. Uh no, actually. Well, I don't don't know that there is. This one's pretty easy. Except if I'm already running configuration as code, if I if I start new to do a new configuration, that's uh -huh. good. But what if I've got an existing configuration? Do I automatically pick these up? Do I have to do something? It's it actually is automatic. Okay. So so that when I look at when I view the uh, configuration as code sample, these will be included now. Oh, okay. All right, so update site warnings. Now the next one, which is this one, 6193, that needs some fixes on it. Whoops, 6193, I said. Okay, so it says, ah, we need to get rid of the word entry one. And now did it get the correct, it did. So we, I don't think we need to put that. Handle label expressions when applying trim labels. How do we turn this into words a user will understand? What are, yeah, I don't know what it's talking about. So. Right, exactly. And, <laughs> and that's, that's where, okay. So what, what this is, is when, when a cloud provider is, using when a when a job requests an agent that would be provided by a cloud provider an or condition in the label expression may cause multiple agents to be started when only one should have been started oh so if i ask for aws or azure or google cloud I may get one of each of those trying to satisfy this request until this change is brought in. Uh -huh. So should it say something like um, during when applying trim labels during cloud provisioning, during cloud agent provisioning? Oops, yeah. Or when provisioning a cloud agent? Sounds good. An agent, a yeah, a cloud agent is it like a cloud that. Agent? Yeah. Uh, you no, know, when okay, too many whens there. So, handle label expressions by applying trim labels or in wait a sec, handle label expressions in trim labels when provisioning a cloud. Maybe it's just this handle label expressions when provisioning a cloud agent. Why do they care about trim labels? Even then, do I care about label expressions or do I care that? better definition of yeah i mean the way you explained it is i don't get three different agents on three different cloud providers i get the one oh, I asked oh right right um and that's meaningful to me label expressions are lovely right right exactly you're right the the so so the answer is this is really do not launch only one agent to ah. satisfy uh, 
cloud agent requests that use label expressions. That makes sense. Beautiful. Does that seem okay? Looks good to me. What do the rest of you think? Um, sure. Looks great. <laughs> <laughs> do I do yeah. sarcasm, dear? <laughs> well, let's let's go with that. And okay, <laughs> onward. So Jenkins terminates cleanly when receiving a term signal. This is So is it run the Jenkins, run the cleanup system, no cleanup methods, functions when a term signal is received on Unix systems? But it talks about it happens only when Jenkins terminates. Uh, not, it, I'm ask not. your question again, Diraj. I'm not sure I understood it. Yeah, uh, I'm just wondering that it, it, there, there is the word terminates. So do, do we want to include something like that as well? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so in this, so this word is important before okay how do i put it in there when stopping the process the, due to a term signal And maybe it should be before stopping, before ex ending the process. So the, I'm that I'm not sure how to use the exact word terminates. Any altern alternative suggestion there, Diraj? Even I'm trying to think. I mean, we could say before terminating. or before a, yeah. So uh, in the original sentence, what does this cleanly means? Like uh, it means that, it, yes. that previously when, mm -hmm. when the a kill minus term was received on, on Unix systems, so like Linux, Mac OS, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, um, this shutdown hook would not be called. So the things that should have been done due to a, an attempt to exit nicely were not being done if I terminated with this Unix signal. And that Unix signal is sent by things like a service service manager, system D, for instance. It informs processes, I want you to stop by sending them a term signal. And it's expected that the process will handle that, receive that term, term signal, act on it, and then exit. And so what, okay. what it did before was it received the signal and just exited without acting on it. 
So now that he's at registered a shutdown hook, it should receive the signal, act on it, and then exit. Okay, makes sense. Um... So like uh, safe termination of process on receiving term signal, something like that. Yeah, and I'm hesitant to use the word safe because I don't know that, that he intends for safe is a safe is a relative thing in this case, right? Like it doesn't kill any builds or something. And, and, it, right. and in fact, it may do that, right? Because... Mm -hmm. If the signal arrives and usually, for instance, Linux shutdown, the shutdown process, shutdown minus mm -hmm. R, will probably send a sig term to the process. But if the process has not exited within a certain timeout period, it will just send a kill minus nine. It will, it will send a hard, an unblockable kill to it. Yeah, that's true, right? Is it legitimate to refer to it as a term signal? It, as opposed it, to SIG term? It is, I think. I think that's signals, yeah. So send the term signal. Yeah, right there. Yeah, so yes. here it is, right here. Okay. So I'm just too so, old school. Well, and and I'd have to look at, I mean, we could look at FreeBSD if we want to look at somebody who's really serious about their their use of words. I just um, noticed that in the description he calls it sig term. Uh-huh. And, and that's then, the that's the that's the C definition of it. Right. right. So let's see if we can find okay. I don't see it in FreeBSD. Let's see about the even more pedantic people, OpenBSD. Hmm. Nope. So they don't call it term. They call it, they just say SIG term. Nope, there it is. Signal 15 term. So is that the same number as SIG term? It is, yeah. Okay. That's, uh, SIG term is, is 15. I still that's, like SIG term better, but. That is pathetic that I would know. Well, yeah, that, that's really sad that I would be able to say such things. <laughs> okay. So where, where somebody's being dated here by, by their recollection of obscure arcane things from header files in Unix. Mm -hmm. So back to the wording. Uh -huh. We could call it Unix terms signal and take out Unix systems. Because that's always confusing to me whether you actually mean Unix or do you mean Linux and Mac and OpenBSD and. And in this case, I mean anybody that's POSIX compliant. So maybe because I that's... think SIG term, SIG term is a POSIX signal. Yeah, it is. Is so, term a POSIX signal? Uh, they're the same thing, right? So here we go, 15 termination signal. Sig term. Right. I'm just just calling it term just bugs me, but no. Uh, well, we could we could use the words POSIX uses termination signal. Oh no, I want to use sig term. If, when I hear sig term, I you know I turn on, I know what sig term is. <laughs> you're not I'm, writing this to make me happy, so you're 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 dating yourself as badly I as I am, Meg. I know I'm more dated than you are, sir. <laughs> Okay, other comments? So I think it looks cool. do we need both sentences that you're gonna delete the first one? No, sentence, I'm gonna right? delete, the, okay. top delete the first one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Cool. That's good. okay. All right. Okay, next. Oops, wrong one. Okay, expandable text boxes expand content into multiple lines again. Regression in two very surprisingly old versions. I think this one's fine, except it needs that hard stop on the end of the line. 
rather than all the again stuff, could it just be correctly expand um, text boxes or something like that? And the fact that we show a regression. So, okay, so uh, expand, how about this? How about, okay, I like, I like where you're going. How about this? What if it were expand text box content into multiple lines? Correctly. Okay, good. Because, yeah, I was like, it yeah. felt weird to have expand and then expandable and then expand. <laughs> uh -huh. Right. So, yeah. Okay, so now, but, but I think Daniel intentionally included the word expandable here because some text boxes are not expandable. So correctly expand, okay. oh God, is there syntax or? Expand expandable? I was waiting for you to say. I know, and it's like. Expandable I, text box. I know, it's like, it's like all right, thesaurus.com. <laughs> Let's find a <laughs> um, Correctly render Display? expandable text box. Con yeah, render. Can we correctly render expandable text box content? Well, okay, the problem is what, what happened was it, this is the fun part, is it deleted white space from it. Ah. No, explaining, no, maybe not. Maybe I'm misreading this. Okay, let's go read the, the bug report. I thought it was that it was doing things that, okay, expandable text areas, strip spaces. Attempt to expand a single line into a multi-line text area strips all spaces when you hit the button. Okay, but, back to the wording. But that's details. What as a user, I just see that it isn't expanding correctly, right? Right. So correctly render expandable text box content text boxes into multiple lines. Yeah, back to expandable. Oh, right. That looks to me like what I see as a user, but what do I know? Okay, well, but yeah, the, the, it, this is now lacking the, the new phrasing lacks the description that, hey, it's when you do the expand action. Do I care? I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe, maybe that, maybe you're right. The answer is, yeah, that's, there was a case where it didn't do this. It now does it correctly in that case. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So new phrasing. Okay. I like it. Okay. All right. Next. Drag, keep the same site, site, same height when using drag and drop component. Okay, so here we see what's happening. It used to be that when you would drag, the thing that was being dragged would collapse to be very, very skinny, very, very short. Ah. And now it's back to doing what you expect, which is it should look like you're dragging the whole thing around. Okay. Okay. So keep the same height when using drag and drag, whoops, drag and drop component or when dragging and dropping? Yeah. And yeah. like that? Yeah, or I don't know, a component or an object. Is it a, it's, it's a component, not an object? Yeah, component is component or object. They're both, they're both sort of meaningless words to say a thing. So that right. either one works great. Yeah, okay. Sure. Okay. 
Now we don't have that one listed as when it regressed. Just a minute, I think we should. Jenkins 67, 496. Okay, this was since 2.277. Okay, so that's a long time regression. Let's fix that. Edit. Regression in 2.27, was it 276? 277. Okay. Next. Wow, sorry, we have taken a long, oh. Do not show the wrong feature name in correct in tooltips of some help links. Can that be show the correct feature name? Yeah, I that's what that's, I was thinking. <laughs> I, was yeah, like, I, uh, think, yeah. <laughs> I think we could get rid of the double negative that's implied. I, I know. Yes. <laughs> I I mean, he's right. It's do not show the incorrect. I mean, I it's probably technically it, more accurate. It is. But. It is absolutely technically accurate, and still, I think it's it's we have literary license here to to accept we're going to do something that's less technically accurate. And okay, so. So what was it again? was let's see, show let's, correct. I just goofed just a minute. Okay. Show correct feature name. Okay. Show correct feature name. Okay. In tooltips of help links. Okay. Yeah, now it's that's them. losing the information of some mm -hmm. because we've inverted the sense of the thing, but I think it's still accurate enough. I think so. Now is this okay. a regression or is this something that's been screwed up since the beginning? Oh, well, that's a very good question. Yeah, I bet it's a regression. I just don't know when. Yes, it's a regression. Oh. And when was it introduced? Display checkboxes in the UI. Is that a link to the new checkboxes? I okay. hope so. Let's oh, see. Good. Was like switch, good. Yes, there we go. Which labels from entry to checkboxes, which was done in 2.179. So we're going to assume it's regression since in 2.179. Except you just add that to the line you're going to delete. Oh, right. Well, and did I say it correctly? I don't remember how we say that. Regression in, regression from. I guess I should read it and see. Regression in. Okay, yeah. got it. All right. So, okay with that? Yes. Okay. Upgrade. All right. Okay. So, that's it. You've been very patient. The others were all suppressed. I'm going to go ahead and ask Core to again run its change log. And they're in the right order. There was just that one that was dev that Gira. And, and that will have to be corrected after right. the fact. Yes. But all the others are. I didn't. I didn't notice on the others. I wasn't paying attention. So. Yeah. If I have to touch one, I'll double check all of them. Okay. Okay. I think. All right. So it's running. Great. Next topic. Sorry for the long run on that one. Okay. You suck. So, Diraj, you had a question about Google Summer of Code office hours this week. What was your question? Yes, a small one. Like, what is the scope of discussions that can happen in this meeting? Like, just uh, doubt solving or a participant can uh, discuss the progress that they've made as per an idea for a particular project and discuss whether this is the right way to do it or not. Or that should be done on the Gitter. No, it, it can be it can be discussed interactively in that session. It can be discussed in Gitter, absolutely. So that session is open for any topics, um, any any anything that will help the candidates as they prepare their proposals. Right. So uh, let's say if a candidate has made progress in terms of code and um, they want to show the demo. Uh -huh. Is it the right thing to do? Absolutely. They could show a demo in the office hours. Yes. 
Oh, okay. Now mm -hmm. it's it's a place where hey, what what we're trying to do in the office hours is assure that we have resolved the concerns of candidates, questions they may have. How do I do a good application? How do I how do I write this proposal? What are the things I should be considering? Uh, that sort of thing. And the demo is a good way, certainly, for us to talk about, hey, here's how it feels. Most of the time, a demo would be a surprise for me just because I wouldn't expect to see implementation of the project yet. That usually happens during the Summer of Code funded, funded time. However, um, you could show a demo of a prototype or, hey, here's the idea, thinking about this, would this, this be better or this other thing? Did that answer your question? Yes, it, it did. It, um, I asked this question because um, when someone shows a demo and it wouldn't be fair for other candidates, they might be thinking, oh, he is, he is now in uh, the implementation stage and we are not yet un understood the project. So it might not be fair to them. That's why. Well, and, and I'm much less worried about, we're much less worried about fair here than we're, we are about sharing. We want to be sure mm -hmm. that everything we possibly can encourage to be shared is shared. So that's mm -hmm. why we, we invite candidates to create public Google documents that are their plan and that they invite reviews from mentors and from org admins. Mm -hmm. And also other candidates can see those documents and it's intentional because we like for people to work off of each other's inspiration, others ideas and say, oh yeah, that mm -hmm. was a good idea. I should do that. It's open source and that's one of the ways. Right. This is definitely not a closed source proposal project process. Mm -hmm. Sure, that makes sense. Great. Okay, any other questions about office hours? Um, no, nothing, nothing much. Okay. All right, next topic then was Shikode Africa Contributhon. I posted the project ideas, suggestions to community.jenkins.io. Here they are. And, oh, oh, interesting. <laughs> Gavin Mogan suggesting, hey, consider automation to capture the screenshots. And uh, that, that sounds terrifying to me, but I, I, I think, it could be an interesting programming task for somebody who really wants to learn Selenium very well. Or Cypress. There's... Or Cypress, right? Yeah. Or whatever, yeah. He, he lists several, mm -hmm. right? Capybara, Puppeteer, yeah. Yeah. I mean, people avoid, I've, I've done it. I've avoided using screenshots because I don't want to have to maintain them. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> right. Well, and, it's a lot and of work. writing code to get to those screenshots can be every bit as hard or worse. So, and, it's, and it is sad because sometimes it is the, the best thing to do. It, it's is to show a picture, right? Because it's it's like, oh, everything's are so much easier if I can just you know see the picture and then we know exactly what we're talking about. But you're right. It's right. it's hard. So hard to maintain to keep them up to date. Yeah. Well. And thankfully, the, the UI has been quite stable, but right. but we're, exactly. we've got significant changes coming in this 2.332.1 release, and the, there aren't actually terribly many screenshots in the documentation, so it's not, it's not a huge update, but it could be an, I think it is an interesting project. But again, I think the, the contributing guidelines actually suggest not using too many screenshots because of the maintenance Correct. problem. Right. I mean, this yep. is the third major change in like two years, isn't it? Because we had a, didn't we have a color change? And then, and then we certainly had the big one, you know, when we went to the tiles. Yeah. And so we've had, fashion. we've had, we've had multiple changes and, and those changes, I was just looking at a screenshot today and the, the changes are surprisingly close to what we've, what we've already got. So it's, we're, we're actually okay. Well, and there's but, other things. If you had, say, a, a actually along with that would be code. As I'm thinking, um, this new stuff that's in configuration as code. If I listed out a configuration as code file, that would change now. I mean, it's not technically. 
It's not yeah. technically a, a user interface change, but it's yeah, a separate uh, thing. It's yeah, for if me, I'm going to do that, I shouldn't do it with a screenshot, although people do. Yeah, that. That, that's, that for me is quite separate from configuration as code, really, that's, that's a, it's code and therefore write it as text, yeah. But All right, so I, other, I, I, other challenges here, we'll need mentors. I've placed several of you, the DocSig in general, in the list as mentors. So just so you're aware of what I said about you. Inclusive naming initiative code reviews, mentored by us, and screenshot SOT updates mentored by us. Test the tutorials mentored by us. So I'm still looking for others who are interested in mentoring. Deraj. Oh, did I spell yeah. your name wrong, Deraj? I did. Wow. Shame it's on even me. Nice. Deraj. Let's correct that. Deraj. <laughs> See, that's what you get when you have an Italian writing. Okay, so. It's even better. So I have a question here. Um, um, you, you were talking about uh, using Selenium and automating. So was that a, a sarcastic or is it? Really oh, no, needed? no, no. That was, that was, that was Gavin Mogan making, offering it mm -hmm. as a suggestion. I find that kind of automation a little unnerving because okay. so what he's suggesting is here is, hey, you could automate it and take screenshots as code. And, and mm -hmm. I, I think it's interesting, but for me, I hesitate. I have a hard time imagining that the automation effort is worth the gain that we get from it. Yes, we could generate screenshots every release then. And absolutely it would be show the current screenshots, but do the screenshots change enough to justify that? I think it might be, be more for trying to um, get a more coding focus project idea. Yeah. Maybe, and, maybe and, that's probably what he was angling for. I yeah. Mean, and and granted, my challenge like, with. Yeah. <laughs> in the terms of, you know, the different ideas, maybe it's not going to be like, part, like if, you know, you only have three slots and it might not win from that perspective unless there's an incredibly strong proposal but well it, all, it might be a better candidate for gsoc i'm getting the feeling that the uh the she code africa people are more interested well if they're going to do coding they want to do javascript not java right let alone python or something like that um, right and but, but there seems to be, I was surprised that there was actual interest in technical writing. There's a lot of interest, I think, in program and uh, product management. There is more interest in some of these other things than in hard coding. And I don't know how much, I, I don't think, I'm getting the idea that the African universities are not offering real sophisticated coding curricula. Right, and th that matches with our experience last year. Right. right. Last year, the five candidates, they were top tier candidates, but they came to us with almost no Java experience and strong JavaScript skills, but we didn't have a way for them to apply their JavaScript skills. So we put them into very deep water uh, when we had them start doing Java based development. And that was that was great, but it didn't seem to fit them really well, whereas these are are much more well suited to a brand new person who's just starting and may have no Java experience whatsoever. Right. Are there needs? I mean, because the the movers and shakers of the Java community are, or of Jenkins community, are hardcore Java people and Maven and all this sort of stuff. But there's npm. There's a lot of JavaScript stuff out there. Are there things that need to be done to better support JavaScript? Well, there's, there's a lot of work going on in JavaScript, yeah. but the problem is it's not well suited to a first, first time, first time contributor. Okay. There's Uli, Uli Hoffner and his students at the Technical University of Munich are doing significant contributions in JavaScript and, and they, they, they really, really look good as a result, but that's with Uli's mentoring after five plus years of him doing it. And 
being very close to his students as they make progress so that he can coach them and mentor them. These, these people just don't have the context to do that caliber of contribution. Yeah. Cool. Um, so um, coming back to this, I'm sorry, I need to ask a basic question. So the screenshot that uh, Gavin is mentioning is regarding the ch weekly change logs, right? No, no, no. What he's suggesting is screenshot updates for anything that we would need to update as part of this. As so it's not the change log. Okay, so where would those screenshots be visible ideally? So let's go looking. Let's find a few. So I was just looking for these. So if we look at documentation, um, managing Jenkins, I think is a good one. No, let's do some quick scanning. The so experience with Selenium, that's why. It's using Jenkins. Here we go, this one. So for example, notice this screen, adding new global credentials. This is one that's not far off from what we have with, with the March LTS, but the March LTS has changed it. It's, there's a slightly different look to this page. So there, this is a screenshot that would would be benefited by an update. Okay, so it's like all the screenshots that we have on Jenkins website needs to be in sync with the current the current way of how it looks. Right. right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Very well spoken. Yes. Exactly. That. And what Gavin's suggestion was: Hey, conceptually, you could to find something with Selenium that says, bring up this page and take a picture of it. And of course mm -hmm. the, other, the other caveat, but again, something's better than nothing, is that those screenshots were not what was there a year ago, say. Right. And the change, I mean, the change in the UI last year required changes in the organization of the text, et cetera. Correct. Because of the groupings and stuff. So that's going to happen periodically. Mm -hmm. um, right. Oh, and yes, and you're right. Um, but there's another thing. If we could automate it, the potential that you could localize it. Mm, yeah, if conceptually. A localized version, they could see the screens that look like what they've. Now, I don't right. know if that works without the rest of the text. Yeah, conceptually. Yes, that's that's correct. It, if, if you did something in Selenium, conceivably you could automate the presenting it in multiple languages then. Right. Yep. Um, so you were saying that this is not worth the effort or something like that? No, it's that it, well, well uh, I'm showing my biases. And so Diraj, don't yeah. let my biases rock, is dis dissuade you from being interested in possibly trying it. For me, okay. putting a SheCode Africa contributor on a Selenium-based project is a recipe for disaster. Because my experience after lots of attempts was that Selenium was just an absolute train wreck to create and maintain. Now, Cypress may be much better. There may be other things that are better. I just know this word has that one has burned me multiple times and I, I I'm not willing to mentor somebody to have that kind of a terrible experience that I had. Right. And well, at the very least, because Zainab said, I think last year we did not really specify in detail what background is required. And Zainab said that we could very much specify, like, you know, that we could have some stuff in there that requires. Yeah. Must have selenium jobs. experience or must. Yeah. yeah right. Um, and and that would be so we could put it on the list, but it might mean we don't get any candidates to fulfill it. But who right. knows, some other crazy group might show up in six months, some university professor might come and say, I've got all these Java programmers working with Selenium and they need some real work to do. You got anything? Yes. You know, I mean, do we have a backlist of just ongoing ideas that... We, we, we certainly have more ideas than we have people working on them. Right. That's... All right, so we've we've hit our time. My apologies for going so deep there. Um, any other topics before we close for today? No, just um, 
one quick, that big security restructure, I would really like to get that merged. Daniel, okay. nine days ago or something, tagged himself to re-review and nothing's happened. But yeah, let me, I'll, I'll check with him to see how he's doing. He was ill yesterday. Okay. And so I don't know if he's, don't know if he's back. Yeah, I don't want to pressure him. Well. It's one of the, it's like, I will, it is not perfect. It is far from perfect, mm -hmm. but it fixes some stuff. It improves some stuff and it gets the structure in because we've already had one case where he had a new feature. And so he went in and rewrote the old doc to reflect the new feature. And then we had to go back and I, and the, and the fact that I'm going to have less time to work on this, I would sort of like to see that in there. And then there's a bunch right. of little PRs that have to go in afterwards. So, okay. Well, so it's let the me. The question of when do we get to the point where we say this is good enough and there we can do another PR later. Right. I'll I'll check with him and see what he thinks. Okay. Anything else? No. I'll just uh, continue the discussion regarding that screenshots with Gavin on Gitter. I think. Great. Diraj okay, wants awesome. to do that, don't you? Yes, because uh, I, I've i worked in uh, with Selenium as part of my internship. So that's why I was thinking like, maybe I can ask Gavin how that would look like and then see ah. how it goes. Good. Would that possibly be a GSOC project then or? Or is it, could it be. A, or is it a hack just an, a hacker fest topic that? Well, it, it could be because it, there is, I, I simply cannot in good conscience put that task into she Code Africa. I've, I've not had any experience that hints they would be successful, but a Google Summer of Code project idea, that could work. Yeah. Or mm. just a project, Diraj. Yep, that's interesting. I was just thinking like maybe a hobby project, but uh, if it's easier, yeah. then even better. And, <laughs> and a hobby project would be great as well. I, I just, I, I, the thing I'm trying to warn is I, I cannot in good conscience put this on to a brand new person who has never done Selenium coding. <laughs> that, that, He's working with Windows also. Right, and who may not have a great internet bandwidth and who, Diraj, you've got the experience and you've got the professional background that you've used the tools. So you, you I could see being successful at it. Uh, one of these contributors from Africa, I just can't see them being successful with it. Mm. I, I, I'm, I mean, this makes sense to me. I would, I didn't know that this topic was under Sheikod Africa. Then I noticed yeah, that makes sense. Okay, sure. great. Any other topics? No, nothing from nope. myself. Okay. We'll call it done. We'll talk to each other in about 10 days then. Thanks everybody. Terrific. Take care everybody. Bye.